today to deliver a message on behalf of the Standing Rock Youth Council. We urge you to support us in asking President Biden to shut down the Dakota Access Pipeline. The continued dependence on fossil fuels is, is destroying our way of life and our Mother Earth. Five years ago, we began our historic battle against the Black Snake, the Dakota Access Pipeline, by opening the Sacred Stone Camp. Shortly after that, the youth of our tribal nations world, brought worldwide attention to our fight by running across the country to hand deliver a petition to the U.S. government officials to urge them to stop construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. People from all over the world joined us on our homelands at the Chattisha Resistance Camp. The Dakota Access Pipeline, which went through our treaty lands without consultation, is and has always been operating illegally and without proper permits. It puts the community's lands and waters of the Standing Rock and Cheyenne River Sioux Nations at risk. Back in February, in below 40, de 40 degree temperatures, we ran in collaboration with our Cheyenne River relatives, who were the first to join us in fighting the, the Dakota Access Pipeline. And last week at our actions in Washington, D.C., we were also joined by our Anishinaabe and Meskwaki relatives to demand President Biden to shut down DAPL, stop line three, and build back fossil free. We would like to recognize all of our relatives who joined us on our trip to Washington, D.C. during a pandemic. Jordan Sam, Kaya Lynn Eagle Shield, Cameron Wald, Mikhail Flying By, Tristan Parisian, Annalie Yellowhammer, Ethan Blackfox, Devin Blackfox, Memphis Yellow, Bobby Jean Three Legs, Montgomery Brown, Juanita Lock, Love Hopkins, Monique Reynolds, Tina Puglisi, Katie Peltier, Polani Three Legs, Jordan Valandra, Valandra, well, I don't know how to say that last name, Stephanie Yellowhammer, Carson Yellowhammer, Brandy Knife, Tylea Parisian, Taylor Marabone, Jesse McLeod, Swan American Horse Hopkins, Quincy McLeod, Raquel American Horse, Avner Buffalo Boy, Kylie Fox, Kenny Lawrence, Lawrence Lind, Keegan Eagle, Keenan Eagle, Riken McLeod, Teresa McLeod, Sky White Mountain, Julius Fox, Danelle Wanathy, Lavina Jefferson, Sarah Youngberg, Mason Tubby, Maddox Tubby, Maya Tubby, Kaylee Driscoll, Kazina Smith, Vanessa Azuri, Morgan Brings Plenty, Joseph White Eyes, Danny Grassrope, Dennis Sands III, Julius Edwards, Silas Edwards, Cadence Edwards, Oscar High Elk, Ramona Three Lakes, Raylan High Elk, Alex Dotson, Jacelyn Charger, Nadanis Green, Angel Stevens, Silas Stevens, Isaac Weston. We all knew the risk to us, and we did our best to remain safe and tried to take mostly young people as they are at least risk of COVID complications. We also come together knowing that without clean drinking water or a livable planet, that none of it will matter if we don't take bold action now. We are demanding President Biden to stop these climate destroying projects, consult with tribes, and help this country build back fossil free. We are also asking MHA Chairman Mark Fox to give his tribal youth a seat at the table and to honor his campaign promise of the protection of our water for future generations. An attack on treaty rights and on our mother is an attack on all indigenous people. Please keep signing the petitions and calling the White House to support us and tell President Biden he can help a wrong, he can help right a wrong by shutting down the Dakota Access Pipeline today. Hello, relatives. My name is Love Hopkins. I am Lakota Arikara. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. I would like to express the concerns of what our tribe has been confronted with. This game, this sick game, the government and its players, the Army Corps 
course has been playing with First Nations people and we are tired of it. The government needs to start taking us seriously. They do not have the right to make moves on our land and without our say. We need to talk to each other about what goes on with our um, about what goes on with our tribal council. So that we could have a bigger voice and to help our younger ones start to start understanding about the real problems. This fight for clean water is very real and there's a lot of water protectors that have put so much on the line and I am proud to be one. What I would like to say to our tribal council is that remember what the ancestors did for us. Remember what they went through. And remember they thought about the future generation, future generations. So remember to be a good ancestor. Ha. Huh. Um, uh, I'm gonna, my name's uh, Tashina, um, Tashina Fapoli, and Makota Blackshaw woman. I do go by Taz, um, I'm from Cheyenne River. My uh, parents are Rio Camp and Chuck Smith, my, grand, my grandmothers are Arlene Thompson, Fast Horse, or Fast Horse Thompson, and Rochelle, the late Rochelle Dushno. And I am in Itaji Cho, Namini Kojina, Hunk Papa, Makota. I first want to thank you all for allowing me to speak here today. Uh, I apologize for my broken Makota, <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking because I speak too much, I feel like. Um, but a couple of my friends didn't make it up, so I was last resort. Um, but um, I am a co-founder and a community organizer with the Shine River Grassroots Collective, along with Joseph White Eyes, Danny Gassrope, Amber LeBeau, Jasmine LeBeau, and uh, a few others that are members with us. They're on their way here right now. <laughs> um, but part of the work that we do is to amplify these, uh, the many and various fights and fights that we uh, uh, face in our communities. Uh, I guess I'll just talk about my experience and how I got into this and it was because of the youth. I really want to highlight the youth here. I believe actually in my place some, a youth should be speaking um, because to be completely honest, the youth are who got me to get to Standing Rock in 2016. Prior to that I was on a path, a very lost path trying to find a purpose and I see in a paper early August talking about the youth running to BC delivering a petition and the treaty to Obama. And when I seen that, that's when it dawned on me, what am I doing with my life? And here are these children that um, I once seen and worked with with the Cheyenne River Youth Project and I mentored and I know what type of homes they stemmed from and <laughs> took a it takes a lot of courage for those youth to have stood up. And um, I, I thought, you know, if they, if they have the courage to overcome the obstacles that they face in their life and run for a bigger cause, then I can too. And so that's when August 12th was my first day in Cannonball. And uh, I remained there until early February. Um, there were many actions that happened um, that were traumatizing. And I know, personally, I had to t take some time and get some self-care and healing because of, uh, well, one, I was bit on the breast by a dog uh, September 3rd, and 
And then I witnessed a lot of our relatives just the, uh, enduring the violence that the state uh, inflicted on us the, the, in modern day genocide. And it, it's what made me find a purpose, you know. Uh, I, it was a spiritual, a, definitely a spiritual calling. Um, because ever since then, I haven't left this fight. And every day I think of our youth here. And um, they're not leaving anytime soon. And they're standing up and telling us, stand with them. And that's a powerful, powerful act when you, your young youth are telling us older ones to get our crap together, you know? And uh, it's powerful, you know? And, and that's when it comes down to us unifying our Tati Shakoni again, despite our differences, despite our... our uh, 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 or despite what, how we feel about a certain thing and we might not agree with one another, we need to get over that and unify because our youth are telling us to. They're going to be the next leaders of the, who are going to be the stewards of the land and the water. So it's up to us older generations to kind of give them the toolkits needed to continue their fight for clean water and, uh, and to protect Unchi Maka. But I, I, like I say, I talk too much. So <laughs> I'll end this by just saying, um, you know, the last, last week we were all in DC and it was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful, the actions that happened. We were able to blockade. There was a die-in, there was the run. And I caught myself crying a couple times. Uh, just because of how, after five years since stand, or since the sacred coat or sacred stone camp was established, the, uh, a lot has happened, and to for all of us to come back together five years later and continue this fight is there are no words for it. And I, like I said, I cried, and so I, I'm going to continue to stand with our youth here and continue to try to amplify their voices in any way that I can, along with our relatives from Cheyenne River, who just now came in. Ooh, ooh. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for allowing me to speak here today. And um, I know today is gonna go in a good way and I'm very excited and I look forward to working with all of you in the future. How? Huh. Danny and Joe, just give me. <laughs> Danny and Joe. <laughs> I know. You're just in time. You're just in time. Okay. Um how madakyapi chante washte nape chuzapi. Iyan koshri machyapi. Iyan wasaha he mataha. Um good after or good morning, my friends and relatives. I greet you with a heartfelt handshake. Um my Lakota name is Kamjanin Woman and my English name is Bobby Jean Three Legs. Um, I come from the Wakpala district on the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation on the South Dakota side. Um, Winnie just asked me to do some chants with you guys. Um, I don't want to get too much into it because I kind of talk a lot too. <laughs> and, um, but I, I, just, I just want to say thank you to all the youth that are stepping up. Um, now that us older ones are getting into our older adult years, um, it's really cool to see these guys step into the leadership and find their own voices and be able to speak out and represent their own communities on Standing Rock, our, um, our relatives on Shine River. And it's just really, it's really beautiful to see them and grow, grow into those people for us because those are exactly what we need for our future generations that are coming up. And that's the type of leadership that we want help leading us on Standing Rock and um, we're gonna keep keep standing up and keep speaking up until they shut down the Dakota Access Pipeline and they take that pipeline out of our river. Um, it's been like five years now and it feels like only like a year went by. <laughs> and um, I think we're gonna keep doing this until our government decides 
to really decide to protect our future generations. I don't, I don't think it's fair that they, they treat our Lakota people expendable. That is not, that is not what we believe in. And we, we really do think of um, the seventh generations ahead. And it's really scary that we're in this time and space right now. Um, I can't even imagine the, the catastrophic events after the, when the pipeline breaks. Um, and money is not going to fix that. We, we can't drink or eat money. And I'm, I'm really worried about, uh, it comes down to me being a mother too, and I'm worried about my girls being able to have their own children or have their own grandchildren. And that's just kind of a really scary thought to think about. So I hope President Biden hears, hears and sees everything that we're doing out here on our homelands. And we'll go back out to DC as many times as we need to until he hears our message. And let's hope that he really does um, stay to his word that he, he wants to be this climate president, right? Well, let's just hope that he, he really does stick to his word. He does have the power to change that. And I hope that the Army Corps and everybody on their administration really thinks about our people and really thinks about the future generations as well and our water. Um, I'm like losing train of thought here. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I just feel like our people have been through a lot. We've been we've been through so much and we're still it's 2021 and we're still going through a lot with our government. <laughs> I mean, they they literally pushed us off this land so they could have this dam here. My my family was uprooted from their original their home spaces and then when they wanted this whole river and this dam, my grandpa and all of them got washed away under it from the water. So now now our our mission is to protect this water. And um, I really do think it's all our ancestors, all these guys' grandparents, everybody that was before us that really speak through them. When I think about it, these are, these are the things that they were thinking about in their day and time and the things that they were going through. And we did come far as a nation and a people, but we still have a long ways to go yet. And taking away our water is, just the basic necessity that we need to survive every single day. That is not fair. That is not fair to have a, a pipeline going under our riverbed. When they said it would be only five minutes for the, the um, oil to go into our water intake systems. That would just come right out of our faucets and our bathrooms and everything. And yeah. Um, we're not gonna stop standing up and we're not gonna stop fighting until they take this pipeline out of the ground. And I just wanna pass um, the microphone to Joe or Danny and thank you for letting me share some words. Whoopi la tanka. Hame dak yapi, the tanka naji le mi alo. My name's Standing Buffalo or Joseph White Eyes in English. I'd just like to uh, thank the Standing Rock crew for inviting us back up and you know I'd really like to say thank you to the Standing Rock youth who really uh, stood up this time around and took us to DC and you really shared your voices to the people out there and, you know you, you let everything get known to the to the public all over the world again because of what you did you know last week um, you know Shine River has been here with y'all since y'all first invited us back in February of 2016, uh, Virgil, Cedric, Wania, and we're going to continue to be here and standing next to you in this fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, these past four years I know have been heavy on a lot of people, especially after camp with the trauma that we all, you know, gained from that. But we also gained the love and everything else, you know, good from that camp as well. And it took us four years, but we're standing up again um, on the ground. You know, the Standing Rock youth are standing up again. It took them four years. And I really think we have a good grounding and a good headway to really take this fight, you know, back to the streets. 
you know, letting um, the people that we elect, you know, not just on our reservations, not just within our states, but as the country who we're supposed to represent us as indigenous people, I think it's really, you know, good that we're seeing the Standing Rock youth and, you know, some of the Cheyenne River youth stand up and really, you know, inspiring me to keep going and keep moving forward. And I'd just like to thank you guys for that. So, uh, yeah, Morgan brings plenty. Hello, my name is Morgan Brings Plenty. My Lakota name is a White Earring, and I greet you all with a heartfelt handshake. I just want to thank, um, thank the Standing Rock Youth Council and the Shine River Youth and the Muskwaki Youth and all of the other youth from the tribal nations who are coming together and unifying this fight together. Because it really, it was the youth who stood up against all these pipelines, including DAPL. And I just want to thank you all. And we will all stand together once again. And we're going to tell these guys that we want DAPL to be shut down. We want a brighter future for our children and for our grandchildren for the next seven generations. Us youth are literally picking up the, the pieces from our ancestors and from our grandparents. And I don't want to, like our children, our great grands, to be picking up the pieces. So I just really want to thank everybody for coming together. Thank you.